Jumpin' Jack Flash, maybe a gas, 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 but limpin' Joe Biden is a gas, gas, gas bag. So, how are you feeling about gas prices and really all of the prices these days? Good? Great? Grand? Yeah, so this is all while we're being told to be grateful that Biden, not Trump, is currently president. Let me explain. Now that I have the Rolling Stones song stuck in your head, let's talk about your pocketbook and how it may be feeling as light as gas, gas, gas these days. So thank you, inflation, for helping us to truly build back better, get some help for the dumpster fire we are in. Nothing to see here, please, this purse. Nothing to see here, please. Which brings us to today's question. What is the price of gasoline where you live? Let's share the pain in the comments section. And if you could share this video, that'd be lovely too. I mean, it is free to share, which is probably the only thing you can say is free these days. Because looking at the national average for gas at $4.25 a gallon makes you want to throw in the towel. Or it may get you to be thinking of flushing all of your money down the drain, but not the pipeline because we closed that down a year ago. For what reason again? That's right, the reason of politics. I'm gonna sign you and that's what I'm gonna do while you're all here. When President Biden revoked the construction permit of the Keystone XL pipeline, environmentalists celebrated. 1,500 miles from Washington, in Murdo, South Dakota, population 444, Jeff Berkland had a different reaction. How did you feel? Like it got kicked in the stomach, honestly. I didn't, I didn't feel good at all. We're with you, Jeff. We don't feel good at all either. That reporting was from one whole year ago. And at that time, it was clearly the best decision for the country, right? But it's, it's, uh, the pipe is the best way to go. And And that was back in May after Biden's energy secretary, Jennifer Granholm, admitted that using pipe is the best method to transport fuel. So now that we are in March 2022 with gas prices shooting up faster than Hunter Biden on a Tuesday night bender, can we consider giving back the permits for the Keystone XL pipeline? Coo, 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 coo. The White House says the pipeline was irrelevant with everything now with Ukraine and Russia. Let's circle back on that and explain a little bit more. Would President Biden ever undo his executive order that stopped the construction of the Keystone XL pipeline? Are you suggesting that would solve the gas prices issue? Well, do you think that that would maybe affect prices faster than getting the whole country off of fossil fuels? I actually don't think it would. Uh, The Keystone uh, was not an oil field. It's a pipeline. Also, the oil is continuing to flow in just through other means. So it actually would have nothing to do with the current supply imbalance. Okay. Even Weird Canada, with all of its problems in the past few months, has at least one politician who thinks the pipeline should be opened. If only the politicians here knew that the pipe was the best method back when they shut it down. Except they did, as I just explained. That's how you do a circle back, Jen Psaki. The same Jen Psaki who managed a straight face when saying we should be grateful Mm. because right now biden is president and not donald trump orange man bad you know another reason why the american people are uh grateful the majority of the american people that president biden has not taken a page out of his predecessor's playbook as it relates to global engagement and global leadership because certainly we could be in a different place Anywho, a broken clock is right twice a day and the broken clock that is joe biden announced something that was good Today, I'm announcing the United States is targeting the main artery of Russia's economy. We're banning all imports of Russian oil and gas and energy. That means Russian oil will no longer be acceptable at U.S. ports, and the American people will deal another powerful blow to Putin's war machine. This is a move that has strong bipartisan support in the Congress and, I believe, in the country. Americans have rallied support, have rallied to support the Ukrainian people and made it clear we will not be part of subsidizing Putin's war. Anyone else have a sense that Biden did not want to read that statement? It's like when a kid has to read his book report in front of the class. While Biden said there was strong bipartisan support in the Congress, there was not support in the Biden White House. And maybe that's where the more than usual lackluster performance came from.
It was reported that over the weekend, the Ways and Means Democrats put out a press release announcing the bipartisan bill of banning the oil, but whoopsie, it was pulled down within five minutes because the White House told them to. And that didn't work, and Nancy Pelosi got involved, and Joe called her to talk ice cream, but also to say, don't put forth the bill. Because it's all about the optics and the politics, not what's best for the American people. The White House can't appear boxed in or show who's wearing the pants in that relationship. There you have it. Laws and sausages. Two things you never want to see how they get made. Moving on, when Biden announced the cutoff of Russian oil, he also barely sentiently told companies to not jack the prices. But, 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 it's no excuse to exercise excessive price increases or padding profits or any kind of effort to exploit this situation or, Amer or American uh, consumers, exploit them. Russia's aggression is costing us all. And it's no time for profiteering or price gouging. Joe, in his lack of wisdom and mental state, did not give the same message to his transportation secretary, Pete Buttigieg, or his shadow, Kamala Harris. Because as we know, never let a good crisis go to waste. Exploit, exploit, exploit. Clean transportation can bring significant cost savings for the American people as well. Last month, we announced a $5 billion investment to build out a nationwide electric vehicle charging network so that people from rural to suburban to urban communities can all benefit from the gas savings of driving an EV. An EV. That's electric vehicle for all you losers who are too busy doing your jobs to come up with such posh lingo as EV. And that EV only costs north of $50,000, which is only 500% more than my used minivan. But with gas prices as high as they are now, hack that 50000 would be a savings. And that brings us to... Where in the world is Kamala Malama Ding Dong? <laughs> The Ding Dong was also rubbing elbows with Petey Boy and speaking at the Accelerating Clean Transportation event. For her contribution, Harris cribbed off of the socialist John Lennon. Imagine a future. The freight trucks that deliver bread and milk to our grocery store shelves and the buses that take children to school and, and parents to work. Imagine all the heavy-duty vehicles that keep our supply lines strong and allow our economy to grow. Imagine that they produced zero emissions. Well, you all imagined it. That's why we're here today. Because we have the ability to see what can be, unburdened by what has been, and then to make the possible actually happen. She is the gift that keeps on giving. By that, I mean she's the reason we have white elephant exchanges. She just keeps being passed around because absolutely no one wants her, but yet she somehow keeps failing upward. You may remember this doozy from last week. So Ukraine is a country in Europe. It exists next to another country called Russia. Russia is a bigger country. Russia is a powerful country. Russia decided to invade a smaller country called Ukraine. So... Basically, that's wrong. If you didn't see the video I released of the State of the Union with that clip included, just know that it was one week ago or only about 60 cents per gallon of gas ago. However, you want to delineate time. Again, Russian oil is being cut off, which is something. And that something is about 8%. About 8% of the oil for America is from Russia, according to the 2021 stats. The ban should be done, but we have major oil source opportunities right here in this little area called the United States of America where pipes can be made and oil can flow freely. Instead, we have gas prices hitting all-time highs, and the media's headlines are simply giddy to use words such as soar, surge, and record-breaking, none of which could ever be said in a positive manner with the current president. And you know our comedians who haven't been funny in years are extra giddy. Especially Stephen Colbert, who lacks any sense of life outside of his little bubble. Today, the average gas price in America hit an all-time record high of over $4 per gallon. Okay, that stings, but a clean conscience is worth a buck or two. I'm willing to pay. It's important. It's important. I'm willing to pay $4 a gallon. Hell, I'll pay $15 a gallon because I drive a Tesla. <laughs>
<laughs> you can see even the piano player was bored by that attempt at humor. Bringing back the map from before, as AAA reported, the average price of gas is at $4.25 per gallon, the highest it's been since the day before when it was $4.17, which is the high since 2008 when gas cost $4.11 per gallon. Way to top that, everyone. Especially all you politically blue states that are very red right now, meaning gas is anywhere from $4.41 to $5.57 per gallon. And how about that evil Wall Street? Well, that was bound to take a nice hit, too. I'm smiling right now. This is my happy face. Leslie Nielsen, one more time, please. Nothing to see here. Please, this purse. Nothing to see here. Please. Yay! But to bring a touch more levity to this situation and to wrap this up, I present you a snippet of a speech from a few weeks ago from my favorite of all the politicians in all the land, Senator John Kennedy. Now, I don't like to brag about the expensive places I've been, but this morning I went to the gas station. <laughs> oh my God. Please, dear Lord, don't let President Biden mismanage Russia aggression. Amen. In all seriousness, I am putting into perspective everything we have. Gas prices are unnecessarily high, yes, but as you know, life is a lot worse in other areas of the world, especially at this moment. You may be busy giving your life savings to pay for gas, but make sure you are also giving all of your Fs, faith, family, and friends. And please share the video since it is one of the only free things left. Until next time, let's go Brandon and stay healthy, America.